Well, hello and welcome to this week's update. Now, we know that last week we had uh, GDP figures and we also had the Federal Reserve's announcement on interest rates. Like I said last week, if they do increase by only 0.75 as opposed to one percentage point, I think you'll see the markets rally as a result of that. And that's exactly what happened. Now, if you have a look at the markets, we can see we've had a nice move here, but we do have this pivot high here at 4176 on the SPX. I think we probably maybe have a little bit more in the tank to the upside and then maybe struggle at this level. We do have a bullish opening range, but that will be reset on Monday being the first trading day of the month. If we have a look at the QQQ, a couple of things here that I'm seeing. Number one is this trend line here. Okay, and the other one is this significant pivot here, right? And if you look back at this pivot high here, you can see it's a pretty significant level, right? So I think that is going to be an area that the market struggles with, uh, or the QQQ struggles with. Uh, if it does get above 3175, it may have a little bit more till it gets up to this upper trend line and then maybe fails at that level. So that's what I'm that's my best educated guess as to what's probably going to happen, right? So there's that. Now, TLT, I've spoken about that. We've got a long position in TLT. We haven't seen the break up yet in TLT. But if we have a look here at the yields, the 10-year yield here, they have broken down out of this uh, head and shoulders pattern. They've broken the neckline. If they continue to move down, I think we'll see TLT moving up as they are inverse rate inversely related so I am still holding that position as we speak um, we're going to keep a close eye on that so why did we see the markets have this bit of a move up um, well number one we didn't raise rates by 1% like I spoke about 0.75 so the markets like that and then we have now officially entered a recession right two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth uh, yes they're trying to change the definition but we're in a recession, okay? That's it. So now that we've entered into a recession, maybe they will ease off on raising rates so aggressively. That's the other reason why the market's probably having a bit of a rally. I think it's short term. I think the impact of the recession and uh, all the other doom and gloom around the world will probably hit the market soon. I think this rally is short lived and they are my specific targets that I'm looking at. Now, if it does fail at 3175, this pivot high, or this downward channel, uh, I would be looking at a stock that's moving pretty identical to that, like Microsoft, that's right up against that trend line. This could very easily fail if the QQQ fails at that 317 level or um, the downward channel. I think this stock will move down as a result as well. You know, even Apple, but again, we've got to see the QQQ move down first, obviously. Apple's had a pretty significant move up. I mean, from around uh, 130 to 162.51 right now. Now, big move up again this is very overbought right now the earnings were not stellar right they grew earnings one point uh, revenue 1.9 percent on a year-over-year -year basis nothing stellar about that um, so yeah, I think that that's probably a bit overheated as well so we'll see we'll see but my view is that there's not maybe a little bit more room to the upside but not a lot um, and then a short-term pullback, okay? Uh, we do obviously have a lot more stocks now that are above their 50-day moving average. 68% of stocks now are above compared to 25 a month ago. So we've had seen a big move up, but I think it is overdone. Maybe a little bit more move, but not that much. That's my feeling with the overall market. Now, just to give you an idea of making sure that you're looking at the big picture when you're looking at stocks, okay? You can't just look at a stock by itself in a vacuum, right? That, that's ridiculous. You have to look at the overall money flow, looking at the index, the big picture, then looking at the sector, industry, and then finally the stock. Are they all doing the same thing? Are they all moving up? Are they all moving down, right? For example, the trade that we were in, a short-term day trade we were in, uh, if we have a look here, we can see that uh, Tesla and the industry that it belongs to uh, auto manufacturers, you can see that once it took out this pivot high here on the industry, it then did the same thing with Tesla. So you've got to be looking at the bigger picture, the industry, sector, or index, to then determine what you do with the actual stock. So that's very important to look at. So, you know, when I'm looking at Apple and I'm looking at uh, Microsoft to move down, short-term pullback, um, that's only based on the QQQ doing the same thing. 
right? If that doesn't move down, doesn't break 317 and start moving down, then uh, those trades aren't valid. But certainly something you need to keep on your watch list and something we need to be mindful of. Now, another thing with Tesla, we've seen a pretty decent move recently. Certainly on Friday, we saw it move uh, $47 to the upside. Now, obviously about 909 here, we've got the 200 day moving average, simple moving average on the daily chart. It may run into a bit of resistance here and then stall. Uh, but with a position that we have here on Tesla, we initially sold the 900 put. Okay, green to buy the stock at 900. It then had a big fall. Okay, so we ended up selling our call once we owned 100 shares, right? We were put the shares. <clears throat> we then sold the 800 call. That expired worthless. We kept all the money. Then I sold the 860 call for the 19th of August, right? Which is about, uh, you know, about three weeks from now. Now that we've seen the stock move all almost up to... 900 while it could fail at the 200 day moving average and pull back uh, i don't want to sell the stock at 860 even though my break even my cost basis is 842.92 i want to bring in more money so what i'm going to do is buy back the 860 call okay that i sold for the 19th of the 8th expiry right so that's the same expiry the same option that i sold okay so i'm going to sell uh, we're going to buy that back yes i'm going to be at a loss here um, of 43.65 per contract, but what I want to do here is then go ahead and sell the 900 call for the next month. So yes, I'm in the trade for another month. I could just let it stay above 860 and make a profit. I could very easily do that, but I want to make more money out of it. I still like Tesla long term, so I'm going to buy back the 860 call, which is going to cost me money, and then I'm going to sell the 900 call for the for another month. So I'm in it for just under a month longer. I can bring in $66.80 for doing that. So thereby my new break even, the cost to buy back the original call minus the premium for selling the new call means I've reduced my break even from <clears throat> 842.92 down to 833.27. So I've reduced my break even and very importantly, I'm now agreeing to sell my stock at $40 higher price than I initially was. So not only did I reduce the, the break even, I increased the price at which I would need to sell the stock if it finishes above 900 come the 16th of September. So the power and versatility of options when you really understand what you're doing is very, very powerful. Uh, with one of my programs, the Money Wheel program you're looking at right now, uh, we have an 88% win rate this year, 88% pretty impressive so this one here will obviously end up being another winning trade more than likely but uh, that's what we're going to do with that position I love what we do with options we are really on a tear with our option trading and uh, that's my views on the overall market all right my friends I hope you enjoyed that if there's any feedback please send it to support at cashflowoptions.com.au if you enjoyed that uh, let me know and thank you so much all the best I'll see you next week bye for now